we shall commence the topic by studying about dividend irrelevance. Dividend irrelevance means that dividend is not relevant as the investors are only interested in returns that they receive whether they receive in the form of dividends or capital gains. It is the earning power which decides the market value of the firm. That implies that dividend policy has no role to affect the company's share price anyway. A theory has been propounded by two economists, Miller and Modigliani, to support this view. Their view is referred to as the MM Dividend Relevance Theorem. It is presented in their 1961 article. After studying this module, you will be able to understand the idea behind relevance of dividends, explain Miller and Modigliani theorem on relevance of dividends, explain various assumptions of MM theory, and know that the market value of a firm is independent of its dividend policy. We shall discuss on the Miller and Modigliani theory on dividends known as the MM hypothesis. Miller and Modigliani proposed this view that the dividend policy has no effect on the share price and hence no effect on market value of the firm. They suggested that the share value is the function of the firm's investment decision. The value of the firm increases on account of increase in earnings rather than the way earnings are being distributed between dividends and retained earnings. MM argued that the earnings can be distributed as dividends as well as can be retained. If a firm retains all the dividends instead of di distributing the dividends, then the shareholders will enjoy the capital appreciation earned by the investing the retained earnings. On the other hand, if a firm distributes all the earnings, the shareholders will get the dividends beforehand equal to capital appreciation which could have been derived from retained earnings. We shall now understand the MM model assumptions. MM hypothesis is based on following assumptions. Number 1. Perfect capital markets in which all the investors are rational, the information is available to all with no cost involved. There are no transaction costs involved. Securities are infinitely divisible. No investor is large enough to influence the market price of securities. There are no flotation costs. Two, there are no taxes involved on dividends as well as capital gains. Number three, a firm's investment policy is fixed. Therefore, there are no changes in firm's required rate of return. Number four, there is a perfect certainty by the investors in regard to future investments and profits of the firm. Therefore, the investors can forecast the future prices and dividends with certainty. A single discount rate is applicable for all the securities and in all time periods. Therefore, R is equal to K which is equal to K what T for all the T. This assumption was dropped later. In their books of market price rupees 100 each, the company has no debt in its capital structure. The internal accruals for capital expenditure projects available to the firm are rupees 60 crores. This investment will earn the company NPV of rupees 30 crores. The company also intends to pay a dividend of rupees 20 per share. The company wants to spend on capital investment as well as pay dividends. Let us understand how the firm's value will be affected in the two scenarios. Let us consider both the scenarios. From the calculations shown here, we can see that in both the situations, the market value of the firm remains same. The investor earns in both the scenarios. When the firm does not pay dividend, the market value of the share is rupees 110, 
whereas when dividends are paid, the market value is rupees 90, that is, capital loss of rupees 20, which is compensated by dividend payment of rupees 20. Thus, dividend payment is not relevant as the market value remains same in both the situations. We shall now understand how MM states that dividend is irrelevant. We can derive the valuation model to test MM hypothesis from the equation 1, where DIV1 is equal to dividend per share at time 1, P0 is equal to market price per share at time 0, P1 is equal to market price per share at time 1, K is equal to cost of equity capital. If we multiply both the sides by N, number of outstanding shares, we will get the value of the firm as shown in the equation 2. If the firm sells m number of shares at time 1 at a price of P1, the value of the firm at time 0 will be as shown in equation 4. The equation clearly shows that the firms can pay dividends and raise funds to undertake investment policy. The investments of the firms can be financed either through retained earnings or issue of new shares or a combination of both. Thus, the amount of new shares issued will be as shown in equation 5 where I1 is equal to total investment during the first period, X1 is equal to total net profit of the firm during first period. This equation has been derived after substituting value of MP1 from equation 5 into equation 4, as shown here such that we get value of the firm as shown by equation 6. From the value so derived, it is evident that the dividend policy does not affect the wealth of the shareholders. MM hypothesis faces criticism on the following basis. Information about company's prospects. MM supports that the dividends are an alternative for future earnings anticipated in future for the valuation of the firm. However, dividend payments may carry information about the company's prospects. A high dividend payout may suggest that the future of the company is bright and vice versa. Uncertainty and fluctuations. Stock market returns are uncertain on account of various factors, systematic and unsystematic factors. Therefore, uncertainty may make a shareholder prefer for present earnings in the forms of dividends. Also, some investors are fond of enjoying current incomes due to various reasons like sense of security and preference for current income. Therefore, such factors make dividend payments relevant. Continuing with the basis of criticism, other points are as follows. Transactions costs. MM model assumes there are no transaction costs, but in real world, the transaction costs are there and hence dividend income is not equal to capital gain. Therefore, to save on such costs, an investor with higher appetite for current income prefers companies paying higher dividends. Different rates of taxes. As per MM model, there are no taxes on dividends and capital gains. In reality, there are taxes on both the incomes. In India, there are no taxes on dividends for the shareholders, but capital gain tax is charged. Therefore, a shareholder preferring current income will prefer dividends rather than selling the shares. Issuance cost on raising additional capital. MM model assumes that the firm can raise additional capital whenever they pay dividends without incurring any costs on issue of the securities. But in reality, a new issue involves costs known as flotation costs, such as underwriting fees, legal fees, and registration fees. They depend on the size of the issue. Higher the issue size, lower the flotation costs. Additional equity at current market price. MM model makes the assumption that the additional shares can be issued at the existing current market price, while in the real world, the companies have to depend on the advice of the merchant bankers to devise a market price which is mostly lower than the current market price. Rationing of investment projects. In MM model, it is assumed that the firms invest in those projects in which the rate of returns earned is equal to the cost of capital. Also, it means that the investment policy is not dependent on the financing policy. In practice, firms don't buy this premise due to various reasons. Sometimes, firms are not able to raise money for the investments due to difficult market conditions or riskiness of the firms. We shall now recapitulate what we have learned so far. Dividends are irrelevant as the market value of a firm depends on firm's investment and earning power. 
Miller and Modigliani, known as the MM theory, proposed a theory on dividend irrelevance. MM assumed that markets are perfect, there are no taxes for the shareholders, investment policy of the firm is fixed and there is perfect certainty for future profits. MM argued that the market value is a result of firm's earning power rather than the way it is distributed. MM theorem is criticized on account that in the real world the markets are not perfect. There are different types of investors. There is an existence of taxes, flotation cost, etc.